Okay, so this is the first video in a new series, which I'm going to be doing uh, using GMAX. Here we are, here's GMAX uh, 3D modeling program. And uh, for making a Great Western Railway seven plank wagon for trains. I know there's plenty of them out there on the download station. I just want to make my own. So what am I going to start with? Well, first of all, um, what I've done Let's get this up. I've scanned in the plan from Russell's excellent book of plans. Uh, it's called, just looking around here, it's called The Great Western Wagon Plans Book by J.H. Russell, Oxford Publishing Company. And um, that's what it is, cover to cover plans. There are hundreds of them. And uh, not sure if I'm going to make them all, but I'm certainly going to have a go at some of them. And then to supplement that, so that's the plan, and then to supplement it, I've got this picture here, which is um, the, the same sort of vehicle, though it's been adapted for uh, wartime use, as it says there, for conveying horses and mules in army service during World War One. So it's got these rings added, which obviously I'm not going to put in. Um, the doors are slightly different from what we've got there. But I'll come to that and this uh, the the um, the bar for the tarpaulin high bar the fitting there which is up here has been moved down don't know why um, can't imagine they ever put it over horses anyway it's not there so but it's going to give me this this is okay it's going to give me the basic uh, layout of it and the actual textures and that I'm going to come on to in a minute but I'm going to treat this one the plan as a texture so you can see I've called it here open wagon O uh, and it's number O2, it's, it's type O2. Well actually that says 0 2 but well, I'm not going to worry too much about that. And if we look down in the my PC, so here's models and this is GWR standard gauge, you can see it's quite a variety there. And down in wagons and vans, where are we? open wagon there we are O2 well, let's close that so I can just that should I put a capital letter there these others are it should be a capital O now um, no um, what I do is I'll put type capital O2 there we are that's so slightly different um, because these others here if I have a look at those uh, these are the other ones that I scanned in so let's have a quick look at those there we are that's the one we're going to be doing and there's quite a few others loads and loads and loads and loads of them plenty of wagons to make look forward to them uh, but this particular one which I've done oh, well, there it is uh, it's slightly I rescanned it and it's slightly sharper and um, it's only 300 dpi but it's well I just preferred it okay so what am I going to do well wagons and vans these are all just individual files there's no gmax or anything there they're just all jpegs so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a folder and I'm going to call it very inventively open wagon O2 and that's going to be where I locate all of the files that I'm going to use now that includes files such as my much used um, frames file which I tend to use it's just a series of greys um, now I could I could um, normally what I do is copy these but I'm going to cut this particular one and put it in there because uh, I don't want it anywhere else. This is where I want to put everything. This is where the GMAX files are going. And indeed, I haven't even saved this photograph yet. You can see it's just got a default image number there. Uh, I'm going to save that as, first of all, as a JPEG. And I'm going to save it in Open Wagon. Uh, open Wagon. I just call it over two again. Not exactly Mr. Inventive, is it? 
anyway so that's for me to give me a guide for what I'm doing when I'm making this thing right so that's that's organized that as it were and now let's go you can see gmax is behind me here so this is going to be my home folder I'm going to use that for everything that I um, where I make so the first thing I'm going to do is in a brand new I've just opened gmax here is I want to get the plans in so that um, I know what I'm doing basically well I like to think I do but you know, it's obviously sometimes a bit of a mystery so the first thing I want to do is um, let's open up material navigator that's where my materials are going to be materials are they're not separate in themselves they are the pointers for the texture and the texture that I'm going to be talking about so here's the material editor which I need need this to create something in there so the material is going to be always going to be I always use standard I never use multi materials I don't like that and here we are uh, so now I've got to try and work out uh, where, what it's going to be and uh, so the first thing I want to do is I'm going to call it I'm going to call it a plan because that's what it's going to be and because it's all in caps that's my own sort of shorthand <coughs> telling me that although it's going to be in the 3d mesh I'm gonna not gonna be exporting it makes sense to me you use whatever you like and I come down here and the one that we want is the diffuse color and then that jumps up the material navigator like a sub window of this one and it's going to be a bitmap and it gives me this um, navigation window to find out where it's located so as you can see I've been doing work on private owner wagons up to now so you can see there we are there's the breakdown of my PC and other drives and that sort of thing so it's in models and it's in GWR so let's scroll up to GWR standard gauge and we know it's in wagons and vans I know this seems like a long way around but if you organize it into these categories I find you know you can usually keep things okay um, and it's this one isn't it and it's a JPEG now normally we would only use TGA targa files TGA files but for this because it's not going to be exported we can use a J JPEG file so let's open that and you see straight away here we get it plan and you can see it wrapped around a, a ball and that means we've now got a texture that we can use so we can put this away now and I'm only loading this texture at this stage because that's all I need <coughs> because what I want to do now is produce a modeling box and a modeling box is basically three single faced planes uh, if we go up to here here's our planes so we're going to make one of those and it's enormous so far too big to what we want and now if we go back and look at the plan uh, now it's probably not going to open because I've moved it so let's use the proper it's definitely not in screenshots it's definitely not under app data so this is why it's important you've got to remember where everything is trains projects I know this is a bit of a drag to try and pin down where you've got everything but believe me so long as you've got things where they're meant to be it's that one there it is so there's the plan okay now I know because uh, I've got the measurements here already on the plan that the overall length here is 18 feet there it is 18 feet it's not very clear but I can see it okay in the in the so from the end of the buffer to the end of the buffer there is 18 feet and I've measured what I did is I took 18 feet there measured it in millimeters on the plan did a bit on the calculator so I knew how many inches each millimeter on the plan stood for and then I measured the millimeters from here to here and then did the multiplication using the calculator and it came out at seven foot nine and a half inches to the top there so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a box a plane which is 18 feet by seven foot nine inches back to here and look we've got 246 feet <laughs> so actually all we want is 18 feet and we want it and I always use um, 
feet and inches, decimal feet and inches. 7 foot 9.5. Okay, minute. Let's go in and have a look. And using our coordinates, bottom right, let's center it up. Here it is. And let's see it's smooth and it's rather pleasant, sort of a turquoisey color, isn't it? That's no good to us though. So let's click on plan and then let's make sure we've got that and then click on plan. So we select the mesh that we want, we click on plan and click on apply material to selected object. And there it is. Now if I was to press undo, it would un unapply it. But it wouldn't do anything to the texture itself. All it's doing is removing that instruction from the mesh in GMAX. It's not actually touching the texture. Even this isn't affected. So the texture is always separate, it is remote from the mesh, and you're just using GMAX to apply that texture to the mesh. And you can apply the texture as many times as you like. Um, so it's like a, like a never-ending um, bucket of paint. So there we are. Now that's not really much help is it so as uh, you'll have seen before what I'm going to do now is uh, unwrap UVWs and uh, to do that um, I'll need to be able to see the edit window and also I want to make sure that it is that the texture is properly displayed so let's put texture correction on and also make sure that it is correctly applied across the mesh with a rectangle, rectangular mesh like that, it's not so crucial, but I always like to use plain on that just to make sure. And when you're working on individual faces, this only, remember only has one face, then that beca can become even more uh, crucial. So let's make that the largest uh, window. Now I'm not really going through all the detail of what I'm doing here. Um, I'm hoping that I'll, I've done enough of that in previous videos for you to be able to see what's happening to understand um, but if there are any if you have any queries it's this side isn't it if you have any queries then um, do uh, post them up and I'll try and deal with them now we just want to select the face now I know there's only one face in a plane but it's always better to work as you should so select face and just reveal filter selected faces so only show the ones that have been selected I'll make sure it's been plain hard. There we are, and it's those little grab handles turn red. Now the fun begins. So we pick up those and we take it along to the end of the buffers. And then here we want to just move those down to the bar and here to the rail level as it happens. Okay, doesn't look right, does it? It's far too stretched. 18 feet is the correct. Is that correct? That's obviously not. 15 foot 6 to the cleat. Let's, let's just change it to 15 foot 6. Doesn't that work? Okay. And if we bring those in, so you can see I do plenty of, I, get, I make plenty of mistakes. That is not right. Okay, so I'm going to pause there a moment, check things up, and then continue the video um, in a moment. Okay, so having consulted the book and worked out the um, problem, it's of course my maths because I had I'd got I'd worked out the distance from here to here was seven foot nine. Well, as it shows, it's eight foot three just to there. It's obviously bonkers. In fact, it's eleven foot three. So there's our plane again, which is eighteen feet and it's got to be 11 foot 3 high 
yes doesn't that look a little bit more sensible it's still I think that's still a little bit too tall but it's because I'm quite tidied up all of the display now the wheels there says wheels uh, three foot um, three foot one inch so another way I've got to check in this is um, let's do a cylinder doesn't really matter at this stage how many faces and let's look, three foot one inch diameter gives us a radius of um, of uh, one foot six point five and now if we just move this down to have a look yeah I think we're still a little bit high those aren't circles that's the distorted no lips as you can see I've been using the calculator right so basic uh, where are we? Select face. I'm forgetting what I'm doing here. Edit. So let's make this a bit bigger. Let's get in. Zoom in. Right. Half an eye over to this bit. Let's sort that height out. You can just about make out the white line there actually not quite straight and this let's go up a bit and I don't think that's made a lot of difference there <laughs> if that's 8 foot 3 what I'm going to do the reason why I'm spending all this time is it's best to get it right now <laughs> otherwise you get into all sorts of a mess uh, where are we? Oh, come on. Uh, so holding down the shift key, I'm just moving that over, making a copy. And we know that this is meant to be... I did not say that was meant to be. I've just hidden it. Clever, it? It's meant to be 8 foot 3. Let's have a quick look. There it is, eight foot, like eight foot three and a bit, isn't it? Eight foot three and a half. There we are. Doo -doo -doo. Okay. So let's make this plane eight foot three point five, and let's <coughs> edit this one by. Grabbing the top bits, where are they? Well hid. Go down. And let's take it down to that line. <laughs> so basically all I'm doing here is having a look. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I tend to do a fair bit of faffing about this. Yeah, let's see, I've definitely got, if that's 8 foot 3, that's far too high there. So what I'm going to do is, and that looks more like a circle now. I go to there. Yeah, it's a circle now. So forget about that. Um, What's it got to do? It's got to come down about then to three. Let's take three inches off. A bit off the top. <laughs> Normally, my measurements are a bit better than this. <laughs> But I like leaving in all these sort of this sort of fiddly stuff that I'm doing it well. So it should have been ten foot ten. And that's okay now, so we can delete that. And that looks like circles. That's three foot one inch. There. Good oh. Now, so that gives us that. 
Uh, well, that's all very well. Let's have a look at it. Um, in the perspective area. Zoom in. There's our wheel, so that must be around this side. There it is. Good out. <coughs> and uh, if I put texture correct, you see it jumps into place. Okay, so uh, having done that, I now want to do this bit, the end piece, which I know I've got the height, and it's the same height, and there is the width is eight foot. So uh, very, very simple this is. Just take another clone, now that we've got that right. There's a plane, reduce it from 18 feet down to eight feet. And then let's edit the face. Directional, you know, unidirectional choice. Zoom in a bit. See how we're doing. seems daft, well not daft, but I know it probably seems over the top, but what I like to do is make a box at standard gauge, go for 8.5 and just drop it down gauge and yet that's eight foot so if we go back to our plan so I'm going to look at that in the book it's meant to be six foot six so let's make it where is it six foot six journals two to the journals so if I make that can't be right. The journals there are six foot six. What I've noticed is you do get some, you do get states. In you. No, the journals are right, aren't they? That's the journals, six foot six. So it's this position that's wrong. If I take that up a bit, give it a different colour and reduce it to 4 for 8. Oh, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> okay, so yes, this is right. Uh, because if we look here, take it down to here. Okay, so that's the flange of the wheel, so the actual gauge is here on that flat piece there. So if we take that down, you can see it's correct. So, right, we're fine. So, let's delete that, delete that. Uh, so we know that's okay, it was right, eight foot. Having said that, do not trust uh, diagrams in books, especially old ones reproduced. It really can lead you astray. Now the other thing I'm going to do is make another one. Because I've still got the length. Correct length. And now I want to do the uh, plan. So these are the, that's the side elevation and the end elevation. Now I'm going to do the plan, i.e. the floor. So select that again. Let's have a quick look back at our, uh, and here it is. And it's got to be 8 foot, hasn't it? It's got to be, the length is 18 and the width is 8. So 18, 8 there gives us the floor. So let's 
So what we do now is we just alter that one to 8 foot and we'll select the face again, go in. I hope this is of interest to you. I mean, it's, it might seem being rather pedantic or plodding, but I do try to be as accurate as possible and uh, it's part of the interest I'm trying to get it right don't always sometimes of course you have to do a lot of jiggery pokery bring that down to eight foot now let's see that's not the eight foot there it's the eight foot there isn't it we'll allow for the hinges let's just have a look Hmm, not sure about that. That doesn't look like they've they're not reproducing the hinges, so what I've got to do there is bring that right down to here to the same position as on the um, end elevation. And this, the hinges and the doors standing proud. I'm going to probably reproduce in the texture rather than as a part of the mesh. Then the only thing left to do, now we've got that, is to first of all make sure it's centered. Yep, and then we're going to tip it over. Not that way though. I'm going to tip it over. I think it's X. No, it's not X. <laughs> it never is. It must be Y. There we are. And. What I didn't do there, should have set that so it will just be in 5 degree increments. And now 90 degrees, there we are. So now I've got the side elevation, the end elevation and the plan. So the plan I need to position so that it is centered at x, y, z, 0, 0, 0. This one already is but it needs to go up because it's um, 10 foot 10 so it's got to go up 5 5 foot 5 and so is this 5 foot 5 so it's all standing up and then this one what I want to do is so have a look I want to I just go into wireframe I just want to back a bit. That's in the wrong direction. This one uh, I'm going to rotate. Not that way. No, I said not that way. And then he goes and does it again. Oh yeah, that way. <laughs> That's the way. Rotate it 90 degrees and then move it. And because it's a single face, I can't pick it up from the back because there is no back. It's one of those incredibly. Uh, five, five. Let's mount, make sure it's centered. And let's move it that way. Okay, let's have a look. Good, so that as far as I'm concerned is pretty much the basis of it. Uh, I'm just going to drop this down a foot underneath the grid. Now, that's our test cylinder. Okay. And now that gives me the basis for building my wagon. And I shall start making the mesh in part two. So I'm completing this uh, video now, but the way I'm going to uh, complete it is by doing my some of the documents there now. Trains under teaching, and we want GWR. And a gauge and we've got wagons and vans. I know this is a drag, but okay. And now we're going to call it um, open 
Um, we're going to call it in there. We're going to go into there. And we're going to call it open wagon uh, 02 version 1. And then I always give it the first copy. And I'm just going to save that. And it's all it's doing is saving these meshes. And then I'm going to save it as again version 1 copy 2. So I've got two copies in there. If we look into the folder, there it is. That's my plan. And that's the photograph. So it's keeping everything together. And the meshes, when I start to actually colour the meshes, texturing the meshes, then I shall put my copies of my relevant texture in, in there. So for example, uh, I don't think I've got any in here because these are all plans. GWR standard gauge, let's have a look there, railcar 1, I enjoyed making railcar 1 and let's have a look at the TGA files that went into this, this gives you an idea of what those folders can look like so there's lots and lots of photographs there that I use, I use to guide me through uh, making it plus various colours that swatches, GWR brown, GWR cream, that's from the historical um, Historical model railway story. Anyway, their book about the GWR is excellent. And then here's our TGA files. Those are the ones that I'm going to be using. Or oh, that's the type. TGA type is what I use. So if I double click on frames, it'll load up this. And there it is. That's that's the particular one that I was using for that. So we've got GWR brown and cream. We've got various sort of tones, black. We've got some green in there. Something I've not a clue what I used that for. Must have been something. Um, and that's what I like to do. I like to produce a, a sort of a, a grab bag of textures that I'm going to use. And I use those mainly on the frames, which is why it's called frames, plus the wheels. Um, and the other one that I would use, let's just close that, is um, metal. And let's open that. And that gives the, that is the, for the reflection, provides the reflection. And it's the same size, 64 by 64 pixels, same size as the frames, and that will give me the shiny tyres on the wheels, for example. And anything else I want to be a bit shiny, and you can grade the amount of shininess that you want. So that gives you an idea of how a finished, I mean it's actually just railcar one. Uh, if I go up to railcar, another railcar, railcar number two, less. Because most of this is, I've not needed the photographs, and um, it's a variant, actually a variant on Railcar 1, I think, I can't quite remember. 17, I think that's, oh, look at that. Obviously didn't finish that one. Railcar 10, likewise. Oh, that is. Plans, hmm. I thought I did that, oh well, never mind. I know Railcar 1 was a real, really, oh, there's one that I did, clearly. Okay. So um, as far as our GWR standard gauge is concerned, we're into wagons and vans, that's all those plans that I've scanned in. This is the first one that I'm working on and it's stored there. So that's the end of this video. I hope you found it of interest, just showing you how I'm starting a new uh, project. This will be the first in a series of GWR freight vehicles to go alongside those carriages that I produced about six months ago and I'm going to take it through the process of uh, modeling all the meshes, texturing, adding what will be a texture for the sides and ends I think. I shall use the private owner wagon types textures that, um, that um, I've, I've made in the past. I'll make a GWR one with the planks and that one and I'll show you how I do that when I come to it. But there we are, that's the first stage. So I'm hoping for those of you who are um, still new to, or I just got into GMAX and are looking to see how the textures are done. These are all one texture, of course. They're, it's a JPEG texture. It's not going to be exported. It's purely for making the model. So there's nothing in this view which is the model itself. And that will not be, this texture up here, top right, will not be part of the final model. It's simply part of the process. So having saved everything, and uh, uh, got the th that ready for stage one. Uh, the first bit of the me making the mesh, 
uh, I'm going to close the video here. If you have any questions about any aspect of that, any way you use GMAX, please don't hesitate to post. Email me if you want. If this video has been helpful, please give me a thumbs up. Uh, and uh, as always, please subscribe to my channel, uh, ING for Trains, and uh, it encourages me to make more demonstration videos like this, showing how to do just that, make uh, trains for trains.